And then the audio. The audio should work. Hi, uh, can everyone hear us? Thing they'll be connecting into the live video. <clears throat> what do you mean? So they have to dial in. Can you see it? Sweetie, are they on there? Yeah, Gail. Gail, can you hear us? Perfect. Okay, cool. Sorry, guys, that it took uh, a little bit. Um, okay, so you can see our slides and you can hear us. Just confirming. Awesome. So I just, um, you saw us beforehand. We'll go on camera again. Um, my name is Panita Tand and I'm a, a hepatologist at the University of Alberta. And I have a, um, an interest in um, wellness in general. Um, and I am training to be a yoga and meditation teacher. And I just want to introduce Amrit Shankar, who's going to uh, be doing this session with me. And he is a meditation facilitator um, when he's not doing his day job, which is banking. And he's uh, also a yoga teacher in training. So we got asked to, to do this session by Gail, and, and I think it's really relevant especially now at the time of uh, of covid um and we can't profess to be experts in well-being or or stress reduction but certainly we can share some tips um and some evidence that uh, that we've been collecting um, by doing some research over the past uh, year in this area as well okay so let's just move to the next slide here Sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, we're stuck on this slide. Okay, we'll just do it like this. So well-being, as we all know, just to ground ourselves in, in what we're aiming towards is much more than, um, it, it, it's all encompassing, isn't it? It's, it's psychological well-being, physical well-being social, occupational, financial, and all of these have been particularly hit right now uh, during, the, during the pandemic, um, leading to, not surprisingly, even higher levels of stress in the general population. And there's been many studies to support that. And we know that stress is really this emotional and physiological reaction that happens when you've got more demands um, than your ability to cope with those demands. And I think all of us can probably relate to the fact that right now nerves are a little bit frayed and uh, we tend to be a little more reactionary than, than even usual. I'll just invite you to look at these uh, different symptoms of stress and, and just think about whether you may have had any of these in the past, um, in the past few weeks or, or the last couple of months. Um, common things being just a bit more rapid breathing, feeling like you're, you know, your mind is just so full of thoughts and you have difficulty relaxing, your difficulty with sleeping, headaches, achiness um, in general, low self-esteem sometimes or loneliness which is is really uh, relevant right now with all of the social isolation that's happening and when i think about for myself the two main things for coping i think during covid one is is acceptance and it's accepting that it sucks right now a lot of stuff um the uncertainties uh, the, the challenges on top of our normal lives about how to restructure and deal with things. So it's trying to be mindful and trying to, to be in the moment and accept what is happening and what we can control. And then the second thing is, real, is really being kind to yourself and, and just taking that time for a self-practice and really connecting inside a little bit with the chaos that's going around us outside. 
And so for, for being kind to yourself, um, I think there's several strategies. And, and again, these are not all encompassing and everyone will be a little bit different as far as what they do, but just some tips um, before we get into the actual practice of, uh, of giving you some strategies that you can use in your day. Um, and I just wanted to actually make this into a slide. So, oh, yeah, so, oh, but I can't advance. Oh, okay, well, so there you go, stress during COVID. <laughs> okay, so establishing a routine, and I think that's been one of the most important things um, for many people uh, whose routines have been completely disrupted, is really taking the time to, to bring your routine back into your life. During that routine, remembering to take breaks and what we'll be showing you is a little bit of stuff that you can do during your breaks. Taking care of your body and that of course means good nutrition and we'll talk just very briefly about nutrition in, uh, in PBC. Exercising and, and getting out and about and um, getting your heart rate up. Really important to have good sleep. Avoiding smoking and alcohol. Uh, are also key really health behaviors. Then remembering to take care of your mind is as important as taking care of your body and the two are so interconnected. Um, it's, it's very important to stay informed and I think the PBC site is excellent for information. Um, it's got some great videos on there. So staying informed from reliable sources but not overloading your mind with information. And that's the next little comic here, this mindful or mindful, which I really loved. So are we just filling our mind with negative thoughts and negative media, et cetera? Or can we be more mindful of what we're putting into our minds and what, what we're allowing to sort of go in there? Um, and that, that really comes back <clears throat> to um, taking control again of, of your surroundings as much as possible. Um, the environment, nature is, is, it's wonderful actually that it's getting warmer outside and so that we can um, get out. Like imagine if this would have happened in the middle of winter. So I think that's one thing to be really grateful for. Connecting. And so it's tough obviously when we're asked to isolate, but, but virtual um, connections are, are be like this, are becoming so much more common. Um, and we're learning so much more about that. So being aware and talking about your feelings and, and obviously trying to connect with others who do need help as well. That's a very important coping strategy. Reaching out for help if you need it. And, and there are professional psychologists um, who are out there to help as needed. For nutrition, Gail asked me to touch on this briefly. Um, there's no specific PBC uh, diet, and I think hopefully with time and research, maybe we'll learn a little bit more about the nuances of what might be good for PBC. But in general, it's following Canada's food guide, and so that's lots of veggies and fruit, and making sure you get in a standard amount of protein. If you have more advanced liver disease like cirrhosis, um, that's, that protein element becomes really important. So we're gearing towards more of 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram per day in, in patients with cirrhosis. Otherwise, it's the standard 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. Um, choosing whole grains, you know, trying to reduce your intake of sugary foods and processed foods, um, processed meats, etc. An iron-free multivitamin is uh, what I often suggest to my patients, and then vitamin D, 1,000 international units daily. Many people need a little bit more than that, but that's at the discretion of your, your doctor and your dietitian. Um, with regards to exercise, again, no specific recommendations for PBC, but just to be aware of the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines, and it's moving, is so beneficial, even just reducing sedentary time um, and, and getting up, that helps to prolong life. So the guidelines would suggest 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity. So that means getting your heart rate up. It means being able to talk in full sentences, but um, still recognizing that your breath is a little bit uh, more labored than it, than it was when you started. And even 10 minutes at a time is perfect. So taking that opportunity to get up out of your chair and just go outside or walk around your apartment or your house, whatever, whatever works, but really planning some activity in. Adding in a little bit of muscle and bone strengthening activities if you can. So 
there's a lot of um, actually good uh, resources available online for, for activities now, especially during COVID that have come out. And I'm happy to share some of those with Gail as well. Um, balance uh, is an important component also. Um, uh, just a question on the iron-free multivitamin. Some, uh, in some conditions, iron can be uh, harmful to the liver and to, in excess. So that's why the iron-free multivitamin is normally recommended. Um, and you can certainly, if you're iron deficient, then, then that's a different situation. You would need um, to supplement with iron. Um, more physical activity uh, provides greater health benefits, but even a small amount is incredible in what it can do. And I, this was an article that we wrote um, back in 2018, where we looked at all of the benefits of exercise in cirrhosis patients in general. Um, and this is fairly small for you to see, but it affects every organ, including the brain, and improving quality of life, improving your muscle oxygenation, improving your, your liver health as far as even decreasing the pressures in your liver and, of course, the fat in your liver. Um, we are going to be uh, doing a little bit of movement in, in the next few minutes, and I just wanted to to put down a few slides on the impact of yoga and um, things like physical activity beyond just the mind. And so yoga, actually there is uh, several studies showing that it reduces inflammation, that it reduces stress, it actually can impact immune system functioning, and it slows the, the cognitive decline that many of us face over time. <clears throat> by reducing the amount of uh, brain matter that you lose over time. So there's some exciting studies, and this is more to show you that these things like exercise and nutrition and, and yoga and breathing that we'll go through, those are things you have under your control that you can use in your toolkit to stay well. And they are, they are very powerful tools. Breathing, we're gonna go through belly breathing, which is uh, one of my favorite things to reduce um, stress. And there is so much data showing it reduces anxiety, some data showing that it reduces inflammation as well, and of course has effects on stress. And this slide I put in just to show you that it, this is looking at the impacts of, of uh, mindfulness and of meditation, and it doesn't take months and months for this to, or years for this to, to cause an impact. Even within two weeks, studies have shown that it changes your focus and your memory. And within eight weeks, you actually start to see changes in the shape of the brain. Okay, so reductions in the area of the brain that cause, um, that cause fear and anxiety and stress, like the amygdala, and increases in the good areas that increase memory and learning and attention. So, there is a definitely really interesting work going on. We won't spend a ton of time there, but just to say that there is science backing a lot of this. And then <clears throat> simple practices that sometimes we take for granted, but that take maybe a few minutes a day, like gratitude, um, visualization, forgiveness, affirmations. Amrit is going to try and bring in maybe uh, one of these or two of these into our meditation that we'll do together. Um, but these things are very powerful tools, taking just a couple of minutes a day that, again, show changes in your brain, um, activity, it changes in stress. And we know that athletes harness this power of visualization very, very frequently. And importantly, sleep. So I think, um, I mean, I've had some sleepless nights with COVID, for sure, um, and I'm sure that, uh, that others have as well. And we know that sleep is so important. And all of these things, exercise, eating well, uh, you know, doing this physical movement like yoga or breathing, all of these things help with sleep. And it's important because that is something, again, that hopefully is under our control to try and um, change. And it reduces, uh, reduces depression and anxiety. It mm -hmm. improves your ability to focus if you've got better sleep. And it actually improves your immunity. So we don't have... I, I didn't find any studies saying that if you sleep better, your, your risk of COVID is less. But we do have this interesting study that was done in 2015 that um, took people and uh, they measured the amount of sleep that they were getting. And they, they 
I kept them quarantined in a, in a hotel and they put in their nostrils the virus that causes the common cold. And they found that people who were sleeping less were much more likely to catch a cold than people who were sleeping about that seven to eight hours of recommended sleep um, a night. So again, there are things that are, that are under our control. So before we go on to the actual practice, I just want to show you a quick video of um, what we've been up to. Our, our research team has been doing some work with inflammatory bowel disease patients. And so we've just completed a study of 100 patients who have undergone some of these mind-body therapies um, in addition to a little bit of nutrition um, tips. Uh, and I'll show you a video of what that had looked like. But the results so far, we're just analyzing them and they look very promising for reducing stress and improving resilience and improving quality of life. So again, bringing back to the fact that in this state of, ah, we don't really have much control over stuff, we can do stuff that we, during our day, that can help. So here is the video. I hope that you guys can hear it. is because we're really excited that uh, we're working with with Gail and we've got a graduate student actually who's uh, dedicated to modifying this program for um, for our, our patients with uh, and people with primary um, biliary cholangitis so that we're working hard on and we're going to re-engage with our, our patient partners on that um, to have that hopefully available uh, by the fall is what our target is um, there's sorry, I just missed one question, and we'll we'll just uh, answer the rest of the questions at the end. But did studies increase in increased uh, circulation? Um, you know, that's a really good question, Maria. I, Dr. Swain in Calgary, I think, has been doing some work looking at um, at circulation. I didn't focus too much about that with uh, with the meditation aspect, um, but I believe he's talked about increased oxygenation, etc. Uh, with these practices. So I'll, I'll have to look at that a little bit more. So next step, we really wanted to make this more immersive and actually give you some things that you can do um, in your day. And so we're going to flip back from the PowerPoint to us, if we can figure out how to do that. And um, if you're not in your chair, we'd invite you to get into a chair. So I think the way this is going to work is that we're going to have to disconnect the live feed and dial back in with the camera. Is that right, Gail? Sorry, guys. This is uh, thanks for being adaptive. I, or maybe just go to use camera. Yeah, it won't allow us to. Uh, just end live. Sorry. Yeah, okay. We'll make one more live session. So we'll see you in a minute.